Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Larry Rowe, and today I'm going to be talking about research and development tax credits specifically related to the proposed regulations for the treatment of prototypes. This is kind of a, a hot topic in tax, and just to give you guys a little bit of background, I've spent the last eight years of my career working for Deloitte Tax, so this, is, uh, this hits very close to home for me. So this is the agenda. Um, I'll go over the, the objectives. I'll talk a little bit about the, the research credit, kind of give you guys a little bit of the, the background. I'll talk about the current issues related to pilot models, related to R&D, the proposed regulations for the tre treatment of pilot models. I'll give a court case as an example, and then I'll kind of tie everything together. And you'll often hear me say uh, pilot models and prototypes, those terms are synonymous. The IRS uses the term pilot models. Most businesses uh, say prototypes. So these are the questions that we're going to try to answer today. What is research and development for tax purposes? Uh, what is the current state of pilot model treatment? Uh, what effect does this have on business? How the proposed regulations affect pilot model treatment? And why this regulation is so important? So just to give a little bit of background of the, the research credit, IRC 41, which um, you can find information on, from um, irs.gov under uh, Internal Revenue Code of 1986. So this was originally came about in 1981 as a part of the Economic Recovery Act. At that time, if you guys, any of you guys know your history, the U.S. was in a, 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 a huge recession, only second to the Great Depression of, of the, the 1930s. So this was kind of a goal for Congress to kind of kickstart the economy, get these companies investing in research and development, uh, create new products so that it gets people to go out and spend money. You know, that's what gets the, the economy moving, get people to spend money. Um, so that was the goal to, to get the stagnant economy moving. And another goal of the, the, uh, the R&D credit, IRC 41, was to keep intellectual property here in the U.S. At that time, some of the intellectual property was being outsourced to other countries that may not be necessarily friendly to, to U.S. interests. So if you think about um, these huge defense contractors who are developing like missile systems to, to airplanes or what have you, you don't necessarily want to outsource that outside of the U.S. So it was an additional incentive to keep it here in the U.S. Um, so this is Section 41 and Section 174. Uh, 174, you can find information on that from irs.gov as well. It's part of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 also. So, I'll explain the difference between them. They're essentially the same. Section 174 is like the big brother of Section 41. Um, you know, and I, I try to outline it in that diagram there. There's a lot more that you can actually put into 174 compared to, to Section 41, but in my eight years of experience in tax, no one ever uses Section 174. I have never done a 174 study. Everybody uses Section 41. Well, why is that? You know, if it's, if it's so much smaller and it's so much more limited than 174, why do people use Section 41 tax credit as opposed to a deduction? I put together this simple um, diagram here. And this is kind of, if, if all things are equal, you have a company that has $100 income, um, we're going to use a $20 tax deduction compared to a $20 tax credit. And if you just look at the bottom, uh, the bottom line, tax due, using the deduction, $28, tax due, $15, using the tax credit, all things being equal. So this is why, this kind of illustrates why nobody uses tax deductions when it comes to research credits. Um, to qualify for the research credit, you, there has to be four criteria that met that are met the, the four statutory criteria we, we refer to this as a four-part test if you accomplish these four parts you're performing research and development this doesn't have to be in a lab with guys carrying around beakers this could be in your garage and this is an and test so in order to qualify it has to meet all four parts you have the permitted purpose purpose which the activity must relate to a new or improved product or process second part Technologically in nature, it has to belong to the hard sciences. This is your engineering, your computer science, physics, that kind of a thing. Third part, third and fourth part is kind of the meat 
of the four-part test, elimination of an uncertainty. What that basically means is if, if you're doing R&D in your, your garage or, or wherever, uh, you cannot know the outcome of it. You know, if you're trying to build a new jet engine, you cannot know whether or not it's going to meet the performance characteristics that you set out for or if it's even going to work. Because if you, if you know that it's going to work from day one, you're not doing R&D, you're just building something. Last part, process of, of experimentation. You have to go through an iterative process to evaluate alternatives, um, confirmation of hypothesis, do trial and error runs. You know, like, okay, if I'm building a jet engine, I'm going to try it this way. Does it meet my performance characteristics? No. Okay, well, let's try it a different way. That's essentially what that means. So uh, to qualify for the, for the research credit, three types of expenditures qualify. Wages, the time that you spend on it, the time that your employee, that could qualify for a research credit. Supplies, any of the supplies that you use to build a new jet engine, in this example, would qualify. Outside contractors, if you don't have the technology to do something in-house, if you pay someone to do it for you, that would qualify too. All right, so the issues. So the current issue related to, to R&D, and this is, like I said earlier, this is like a really hot topic is before this proposed regulations there was no definition of prototype for tax purposes and also too uh, companies often sold their prototypes you know if you think about it like a general electric who also who makes uh, uh, jet engines if, if they build this prototype and they sink the you know 50 million dollars into developing a jet engine well, um, they may eventually want to sell that jet engine to Boeing, so Boeing can do some testing on it as well, you know, in world, world, real world situations. And also, too, anytime that uh, companies uh, put expenditures for R&D expenses for prototypes on their, uh, on their deliverable, it just raises a red flag for the IRS. I mean, it just says, hey, audit me. So a lot of, a lot of taxpayers stay away from it because of that. So the proposed regulations, one, two, four, 148-05, which is found on the Internal Revenue Bulletin from IRS.gov, uh, it came out back in October of 2013. Big takeaways here. They finally give us a definition of pilot model, and they said um, ultimately what the taxpayer does with the prototype doesn't matter. In the past, if, if GE was creating this, this, uh, this jet engine, they could not sell it because the IRS looked at it as double dipping. So if you think about it, hey, you know, GE is getting a tax credit for building it, now they're selling it. So they're getting a gain from the government for the tax credit and they're getting a gain from whomever they sell it to. So the IRS said, no, you can't do that. Um, so under Merriam's Webster Dictionary, a prototype is an early sample or model of a product built to test a concept or to act as a thing to be replicated or learned from. Now, under regulation, under the proposed regulation 174-2, subsection A2, uh, the pilot model is defined as any representation of a model or product that is produced to evaluate and resolve uncertainty. Key word there, resolve uncertainty. If you remember earlier, I said the third part of that test, there has to be an uncertainty. So if GE develops this jet engine, as long as there, there's some type of uncertainty around it, they can continue to collect the credit for it. So that means if, if they mount it to a, a jet engine to do some additional testing, that would qualify. Well, previously, it would not qualify because the IRS would come in and say, well, no, it's, it, that jet engine is no longer a prototype, but rather a business component of the, the airplane, right? So they said, that, no, that's not a prototype. That's part of the airplane. It doesn't qualify. So big court case. Um, it, uh, you know, before the, before the proposed regulation came out, we relied heavily on court cases, and this was one of the big ones. So this case, this specific case, Trinity Industries, which this specific case can be found on uh, uscourt.gov. Uh, uh, um, US, Trinity Industries sued the U.S. for uh, expenditure claims that were wrongly disallowed by the U.S. government. Trinity builds ships, and Anytime they build a ship, they call it like a, or a new ship, it's called a first in class. Well, what they did, what Trinity does, is they take existing um, technologies and just put it together. 
you know, and this is our ship. So they'll take a whole design, uh, propulsion system, electric system, put it all together and say, here's our ship. Well, the IRS is saying, well, that's not research. You know, you're just, you're just pulling off of a menu. I want this, this, and this, and you're just putting it together. So there's not, that's not research and development. You're just, you know, pulling off of a menu. Whereas Trinity says, no, no, it, this is research because we don't know if these technologies are going to work together. So we have to go through this iterative process to, is propulsion going to work with the electrical system? Is this whole design going to meet our specifications? So ultimately what happened uh, is um, the, uh, the, the court ruled against Trinity. And since then, Trinity has appealed that ruling. Um, again, here's the, the case information. This was uh, appealed to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, and this also can be filed on uh, uscourts.gov. This, this case is still pending. This has not been resolved. However, with the, um, with the proposed regulations, uh, uh, this is definitely favorable to, towards Trinity. So to kind of wrap everything up and you know, pull things together, the proposed regulations are definitely tax favorable. Um, you know, they provide clarity for taxpayers for this contentious area regarding tax. Because if you think about these companies that invest in these prototypes, you know, building jet engines, building rockets and stuff, in the past taxpayers couldn't do anything with it because they, they were afraid to. They were afraid of getting audited. Um, and yeah, the two examples that I used, GE example and Trinity case, both of those would uh, benefit from the proposed regulations. And in addition to the proposed regulations, uh, allow the uh, the taxpayer to, to sell the prototypes. Um, it does not. It no longer says uh, you have to either scrap the prototype or use it internally. So if you can think about it, you know, if GE is building this thirty million dollar jet engine, previously before this regulation, they would either have to keep it themselves or scrap it. So if there's any questions or comments, I provided my contact information, and that's kind of a high-level overview of the proposed regulations. Thank you.